Joining us now from St. John's is Glenn Winslow, who was at today's protest. He's a fish harvester from the province, who is also an elected representative for the Inshore Council of the Fish, Food and Allied Workers Union. Uh, Glenn, thanks so much for making time for us. You're welcome. So why was it important or necessary for this protest test to take place today from your perspective? Well, Jacqueline, uh, this has been a, a protest been on the go many years. It's just it's building up and building up. And during the last couple of weeks, we've actually visited. I haven't, but people have visited on, on a rotation basis uh, every day during the last couple of weeks and visited the legislature. And, uh, you know, their, their backs are to the wall and they, you know, finally got to take a stand, I guess, is where we're at now. Does it often get heated like it did today, Glenn? Uh, you know, up until uh, <clears throat> so far this year, it, it, it's been very uh, quiet and, and peaceful. Uh, you know, in the past, it certainly has been as heated as what have you seen it today. But uh, I haven't seen nothing like that this year, to be honest with you. What do you think sort of pushed things over the edge today? Uh, well, really what pushed things over the edge today is uh, that we are not, being listened to by government. Government uh, say that they are uh, uh, addressing our issues, but it's always a band-aid fix. There's always side rules and stipulate stipulations attached to it that you think you're making progress, but it never happens. So tell us more about those issues, Glenn. I understand it, understand it comes down to price and in terms of, of market access as well, who you're allowed to sell to. So tell us a little bit more about the restrictions um, and, and just how they limit your uh, livelihood. Well, in, in Newfoundlanders, rules that, uh, what is called the uh, minimum processing rules, and, and uh, what it is is that any fish that's caught in Newfoundland has to be processed in Newfoundland. And like in all of Atlantic Canada, that's not the case. Like our companies can go in Atlantic Canada and buy fish products, bring them to Newfoundland and process them, but no one is allowed to come to Newfoundland and do the same thing. And what is actually after creating is a, an environment where there is actually a small group of companies left now in the processing sector, and there's actually no competition no more. They've sat down amongst themselves, they've set a price, and they've actually gone as far as not only setting a price, they've identified between them which fishermen belong to which companies, and you actually in Newfoundland now you can't even move to another fish processor to sell your product. You're, you're stuck to the same person, and, and you know, it's just come to a boiling point here now. So the premier says that they've expanded processing capacity for snow crabs, also issued an expression, expression of interest for outside buyers for the 2024 snow crab uh, season. Now, does that, does that help? Uh, what, what's your reaction? No, actually, does, that does not help. It's only, it's only a, a Band-Aid fix. When you're talking about an expression of interest, that means that you're going out to see if anyone is interested in coming here to buy. And, and no one is interested in doing that. We, we, what we want is what we have in Atlantic Canada. And our companies don't have to be approached by the government of Nova Scotia or New Brunswick or PEI to see if they're interested in coming by and buying fish species in Atlantic Canada. They are allowed to do it. And we want the rules the same across the board. When they talk about in, increasing processing capacity, what they've actually done in Newfoundland is increase capacity, like they gave out a couple of licenses a few years ago, and they attach a processing amount to it. So the company that actually actually invests in putting some processing equipment, well I'll tell you what happened, invests in processing equipment, uh, doesn't have enough weeks of work to justify getting into the business is what's happening. And one person that was actually given the license to create a bit of competition never actually even put any processing equipment in because he, he was given a limited amount of product to process and the limited amount of process, processing 
uh, product that he had hmm. never allowed him enough money, enough working capital to do anything with it. Glenn, if, if, if part of the intention for these rules is to ensure that the processing industry in the province has jobs, uh, what would your message be to that part of the industry? My message to that part of the industry would be the same as any industry. There's two messages that you can take from that. One is that no matter what business that operates in Canada, if you want to operate in Canada and employ people, you've got to be competitive with the people that you're in business with. If you're not competitive with the people you're in business with, you're not going to be in business very long. That's one message. The the other part of it is, is that uh, <clears throat> we've got to make money in, in, in the industry too. And to be competitive, you've got to be prepared that the other people that are partners in the business with you got to make a living too. And right now, the way this is set up is the, the, the primary producer, which we are the primary producer, are not making no money. We're going bankrupt. And it's not fair that one group that's in business is making all the profit and the other group is, is not going to be able to survive another year. Okay. Glenn, really appreciate you uh, joining us this evening. It's good to get some context into what was going on behind the efforts uh, today. Thanks so much. That was Glenn Winslow, a fish harvester from Newfoundland and Labrador, who's also an elected representative for the Inshore Council of the Fish, Food and Allied Workers Union.